All right, we are in the third stage of our project and we're looking at mind maps and variable analysis. So what is today's goal? Well, I can construct a mind map to organize the structure of my project and the mind map and from the mind map I can perform a variable analysis and we'll talk about what each of those terms mean as we go through. So there's two things I want you to be able to do today or by the end of this lesson. A, I want you to be able to construct a mind map for your topic. And that's going to come from your previous research, your background information. It's going to give you some ideas. What we're going to do is we're going to structure your ideas so that you can move on to the next stage. And then the variable analysis will come from the mind map. So I can't emphasize the mind map is really key in the next stage of this project. The mind map allows you to organize or structure your thoughts with regard to the topic. So this is going to stem from the research that you did. As I said, the back, background research, you're going to be able to take a look at that. And you are going to then be able to sort of create uh, a mind map. So what does a mind map look like? Well, you have probably done it in another course, and it may have been uh, labeled as another name. So basically what happens is you take that generic topic that you started with when you did the background research, and it starts in the middle here. So I'm going to start with education is my topic. Okay. Uh, as a teacher, it's something that I'm obviously interested in, and this is what it's going to stem from. So this would, I would have did, did some research on some education. Now for myself, and this is personal philosophy here, people will probably argue one way or the other, uh, the, for me there's two sides of education. So we got education theory on this side, and that is the stuff that comes down that makes learning a better process or a more enjoyable process for you. So, I'll just go to bubbles, and for me, the most important thing are the students, okay? Are you learning? Are you engaged? That's what's important to me. So, on the other side, education theory, I don't have a whole lot of interest in it in terms of, you know, what my project is going to be. So, I know there's a couple things. There is differentiated instruction, and in teachers, we have the lingo of DI. Um, there's assessment. This is all on the theoretical side. And does it help you, the student? Not immediately. It's something that trickles down and we improve on. What I'm interested in is on the right side of my mind map, and that's you, the student. So what do I have in terms of uh, things about the student that I'm interested in? Well, one of the things is engagement. Okay? Do you find the course material interesting, applicable, uh, something that you're, you're looking at? Uh, another area that I'd be interested in is assessment. Okay, and off the top of my head for assessment, we have oral. I still have the pencil and paper, pen and paper. And then from assessment, you have the oral, you have pen and paper, and then there's a whole bunch of others. Uh, and, and for me, I'm just going to simplify this point as other. Okay. Um, in terms of engagement, all right. Do we have what we call Socratic lesson. That's when I stand in front of you and, and teach. We have what we're doing right now. We have the flipped classroom. Classroom. Um, back down to assessment. Um, we can talk about one of the new things that are kind of coming down the line. Uh, marks. Hey, how important are marks? So we just have feedback versus uh, a grade. Okay. Um, coming back up here, Socratic. We have a flipped classroom. We have action, uh, action research or action uh, slash investigation learning, which means you do it all from investigation and self-direction. Um, and so this is what you're going to be creating. This is what we call a mind map, and it's going to grow and grow. Okay. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, I'm going to leave it here for myself. Yours is going to be much more detailed because uh, I'm kind of making this up as I go on the fly here, just to give you a feel for what it's going to look like. And it could be, it could fill a whole page. Um, but this is where you want to invest time. I can't stress this enough. It helps with creating a thesis. It helps with uh, creating. Uh, a survey, it's so important to take your time and think this out and make sure you have all the areas uh, of interest or areas of possible research taken care of here. 
okay? This mind map is so, so important, okay? And uh, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to expand it anymore. You can you get the gist of it or the feel of it. It's just expanding off on things. So as soon as you think of something, for example, when I wrote down DI on the left side here, uh, whatever jumps to mind is what you want to write next. So DI, so I could have the whiteboards, for example, if I think of what is differentiated instruction, the whiteboards, smart board. So I'm just kind of off the top of my head. When I write that down, what stems from that? Um, uh, what else do we have here? We have investigation. Okay. Uh, I guess ISUs would fall into this category a little bit. And the same thing happens on the other side. So action, investigation, flip classroom. A, for what, when I think of the flipped classroom, homework is a big issue or a big topic in there, journals. Uh, when I wrote down assessment down here and I thought of feedback, okay, marks, grade, feedback, um, student improvement, okay, when you get that written feedback, research shows that you read the feedback and then it gives you that initiative to improve whereas if it could give you a grade uh, you can say no improvement or no desire to improve the topic so you can see what I'm doing I'm just kind of as soon as I write down a, a a bubble here, I then think to myself, what stems from this? Okay, where 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 could I go from here? And you're going to have the advantage again, because you've done the background research, stuff should be fresh. So you're developing this. So I'm going to come back to this in one second. All right, so we'll move on. I left a blank page so you had more room. Well, let's talk about some definitions for a second here. So variable analysis. So now we've completed our mind map. Again, I can't stress enough, the more time you spend on your mind map, the better the mind map, the easier the project rules from it. So variable, going back to grade nine. All right. Variable is a measurable characteristic that you can change. Okay, hence it varies. There are two types of variables. There's qualitative and quantitative. All right, so that's your first definition is a variable. And qualitative is the first one. What's a qualitative variable? Qualitative variable cannot be measured numerically. Okay, and what are some examples of qualitative variables? Well, color. Okay, what color? Um, how do you feel? They're not numerical answers. Okay, so anything that you can't answer with a number is what we would call qualitative. They are still very, very important variables to be able to work with and address. All right, and that's why it's on here on the list as a valid variable. Quantitative then, quantity, means that you can measure it numerically. Okay, so age, how old are you? Height, weight. Anything you can answer a number to is what we call quantitative. So the next stage then is with either variable, qualitative or quantitative, they can be broken down into two categories. We have our independent variable and our dependent variable. So we did talk about it in grade 9, but there, here's a refresher. An independent variable are variables that we can control. Okay, we can control. So uh, I would go back to the wedding. I can control how many people I'm going to invite to the wedding. Okay, so people invited. You can control that if you're planning a, a anniversary for your parents. You can control how many people are going to come. So how many tickets are there? You can control that for the school dance. How many yearbooks are we going to purchase? Anything that you can control is what we would call independent. All right. Dependent variables, then, are ones that we cannot control. All right. So it really depends on um, 
on what we've chosen to control. So it's kind of a funny relationship. So if I kind of match up with the, my independent variables, you can control how many people are invited. You can't control how much they'll eat, for example. So if you invite so many per people to the anniversary, you can't control how much they're going to eat. Tickets. If you're going to say for the next school dance, we're going to print 300 tickets, you can't control how many will be bought. Your tickets bought. You can't control by who. In terms of yearbooks, uh, uh, yearbooks purchased, a little bit trickier for me. Uh, how much? I'm going to go back to the, the party again. Oops, not how much. How much? The hall costs. Okay. You can't go in and say, yeah, I want to I want to rent the hall for three hundred dollars. It's you know, it, it's something that uh, depends on how many people you're having and so on and so forth. So in this project, we have some control over variables. So a shared variable between people will be class. It may be classified differently. So for example, um, if you're doing uh, for example, grade. Some people might want to control that and say these are grade nines, these are grade tens, and then you're going to have some people that don't care what grade people are in. So some will have it as an independent variable, and some people will have a dependent. And that's that's the nature of this project. It really depends on what your focus is on this project. Okay. So variable analysis for the project. Um, students in the past have attempted to make it. Uh, make this a difficult uh, task. But if you create a good mind map, it identifies the variables for you in this project. So here's the format that I want to see. Okay, I just want you to create a simple t-chart. I want the variable here. And here I want um, qualitative versus quantitative. So, oops. So qualitative, quantitative, independent, dependent. So you're just going to create a chart here for me. So if I go back and use my example of education, back to my mind map. So if I'm going over here, uh, if I look at students, let's look at assessment. Uh, students assessment engagement. So I'll come back here. So I might go with student type. I might go with assessment. I want to go with engagement. So you see that I'm pretty much just pulling engagement. I'm just pulling from my mind map to fill this out for variables. So student type. Um, student type will be qualitative. Okay, I can't put a number to a student. Uh, student type, I may want to do independent, so I might, I might want to control the student type and analyze student type, so I might make that my independent variable because that's what my focus is. Assessment. Assessment can be quantitative if we put a number to it, and I'm going to see it's going to depend on my student type. So in my mind, I'm thinking, hmm, okay, these two kind of link together. Engagement. How engaged are you in the lesson? Well, that's a qualitative. I can't put a number to that. Uh, independent or dependent? Well, um, I may want to control it for my project. The nice thing with this process is it's going to be up to you as to what is independent dependent, and you have the ability to flip back and switch them. So what do I want for this particular project? I want your mind map for this topic. There are websites that give you software programs to help create it, but I will accept a handwritten version for this project. It's the only component that is acceptable handwritten. I want a t-chart, as I just showed you, that provides the variable analysis. So you're going to list all, the all of the variables. No, you're not going to list all of the variables, but you're going to list the ones that you feel play a major role in the direction you're heading. Okay? So that's assignment number three for you. The mind map, I do want, encourage you to spend the time on it. And then the t-chart. So you have two things that you're going to be handing in here. One can be handwritten. The other one, there are programs that allow you to create the mind maps online. So it's whichever you prefer. The T-chart must be typed, though, and you can just use tables in any software program. Any questions with that, let me know, and we'll try to clear them up in class.